Joining us now to celebrate this trophy and an incredible performance in Terre Haute, Indiana, is the head coach of BYU Cross Country Track and Field, Ed Eyestone, and members of his team, Connor Mance, Jacob Hessington, and Brandon Garnica. Yeah, Welcome, gentlemen. Nice Congratulations. 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 So awesome. we got, we've got new hats, too. Uh, we got new Those hats. are nice, too. They're not as nice <laughs> as this, but they're really nice. What was the whole experience like? And let's start with you, Ed. Well, it was just really the culmination of 20 years of hard work, and uh, these guys really brought it brought it together. And it was a really fun day. There were some incredible conditions that they had to uh, uh, battle through, and uh, and we weren't the favorites. We weren't, you know, we were ranked third going in. I think that was kind of to our favor, uh, but we knew we had a chance. Our our theme all year long has been naivete. Be dumb enough to believe that it's possible. <laughs> <laughs> and, the, and the guys rose up and we got it done. That's the quote of the day. Be dumb, dumb enough to believe that it could actually happen. No, I love it so much. Uh, you mentioned the conditions that your team had to run through. And, and Brandon, I'd like you to comment on this. How, how were the conditions in Terre Haute? Because it looked like a muddy mess. Um, it was wet. I, honestly, I felt like I was being waterboarded. Not that I've ever been waterboarded. <laughs> but oh, there was just water being Jeez. picked up, mud in my face. It was it was really gritty were, were you i mean were you freezing were you like did, uh, could you feel it when you're running did you forget <laughs> that part yeah my face is pretty frozen and it was really loud and all i can think about was i gotta run fast but it was super cold with us in BYU Sports Nation is Ed Eyestone and members of his national championship BYU cross country team. Coach, you're the first person to ever win an individual NCAA championship running and now coach a team. What does that accomplishment mean to you? Well, it's kind of fun to think about, but I, I mean, it's a pretty small pool of guys who have won the thing and, and that are coaching. But, but yeah, no, it, it's fun. And you know what? Sometimes I feel like I'm, I'm still that 23-year-old who won the national championship back in 84. Um, so um, I try to just kind of uh, make sure that these guys are having the same sort of quality experience I had back however many, 35 years ago with Coach James. And uh, so it's been, it's been really fun, really rewarding. Connor, you take third in the, in the race. What was that experience like for you, finishing in the top three? It was great. Um, honestly, the, the race was so tough, and it got to a point where it was like, is this like, yeah, I don't know even what was going on. I just knew it was hurting a lot and that the, the weather was horrible, and there was, no good, there was no good surface to run on. Everywhere was an inch deep of mud. and um, I just remember passing a couple people, and they're like, come on, like everyone you beat is going to be is going to help your team out that much more. And I kept using that as motivation that even though I wasn't having, I didn't feel like I was having my best day, I was still able to go out there and compete with you know, some of the best guys in the country. You didn't feel like you had your best day and you took third in the country? Uh, I was hoping to win the thing, so. <laughs> <laughs> That's why he's so good. Yeah, he's he's standards, right? so good. I have standards. Okay, so you cross. At what point do you realize as, as guys, uh, your teammates, two of these in studio here, uh, cross that, oh, we got a shot at this. We're going to win the national championship. Walk me through that. Okay, so after I crossed, I was exhausted as could be. I had like. My my thoughts, my brain was probably like turned off. Understandably, I, I no yeah. So I, I I walked about twenty steps and uh, just kind of laid down. Like I fell down on in the ground in the mud and was just kind of laying there for a bit. By yourself? By myself. <laughs> like there's supposed to be officials to pick you up, but nobody did anything. I was just the laying heck? there watching the finish, like just drenched in mud. And then I'm like looking up and. I'm like seeing people finish and I'm like I have no idea how we're doing because it's so deceptive when you just have tons of people finishing and uh my teammate Danny Carney picks me up after I don't know how long I was there it felt felt like I like like two seconds but it might have been a couple minutes <laughs> um he picks me he just kind of like grabs me and I get up he's like you want to sit down I'm like no nah, I'm I'm good and then we just start walking and uh Jake over here comes up to me and he's like I think we won Wow. And uh, wow. and then the I think the I think portion of this kind of was like oh no like I don't want to get my hopes up high and then have right, it be cause like it's unofficial yeah because it's unofficial whatever, right? it's like I don't want to be like oh we want to get my hopes up and start cheering and then all of a sudden here oh it's just getting you lost they they miscounted like a Colorado guy didn't get counted or like an NAU guy didn't get counted and so I like just waited and then I, more and more people were like no like you guys dominated and it was just like. It was unreal. It was a super surreal experience. Fantastic. Let's dig into that moment with Jacob a little bit more. Jacob, when, when and why did you think, hey, I, I think we won this? How, how did you find out? How did you come to that realization that you were probably going to win the national championship? 
Um, just they score five in a cross country meet, and looking back, I when I had a chance to turn around, I saw Brandon, and then Matt Owens uh, was our fifth guy. I saw them in the little finishing area, and I didn't see five from any other team. So that was the best. My best guess is we have five in before any other team does. That was did. a good guess. And you guys, I, the last two or three years, right? It had gone up a notch where it was like, okay, we could do this. We're kind of a dark horse coming into this. What was the mentality, Ed, going into this one where, okay, we have the team to do it. Let's do it. Yeah, well, you make a good point. We were uh, third two years ago, second last year. And then I think this year, you know, we didn't really worry so much about NAU or so much about Colorado, even though they beat us at the regional. And regional, we were just kind of coasting through trying to save save some juice for, <laughs> for the, the national championships. So we were more focused on doing our own job, win the race that you are in. And if you win the race that you are in, meaning if Mats can battle in, and be in the top five, and if, if uh, you know, Jake can battle for top 15 and Danny in the top 15 and Garnica at top 40. If you win that battle, if you win your race, then the rest is going to take care of itself. And it ended up, uh, we thought it was going to be really close. We knew we had a chance. NAU was a heavy favorite. Uh, we were ranked third going in, um, but we knew we had a chance. And uh, at the end of the day, it wasn't even close. And, and it, yeah, it was dominating, yeah, which was yeah. awesome. And Jacob, uh, tell me about this, because it's one thing for Connor to be in third, right? Boom, major points, right? But everyone matters. Those first five matter. So when you're neck and neck with some guys, what's the mentality knowing, okay, I can score and help this team win? Um, there's some looking around. Uh, for a lot of the race, I, it spread out really quick, not like a typical cross-country national meet. And so I was just kind of looking around. I passed some guys from NAU in Colorado and uh, – and then my teammate Danny Carney came up on my shoulder a little bit later in the race, and we were able to push together and pass some people. And then I think we just realized that we were our second and third guys, and we were in front of NAU's first guy. Uh, and so that just kind of was a motivator and maybe helped us to relax a little bit more so that we could uh, run well. How cold was it? I mean, wh what's the recovery like as well after running a race like that? Well, I mean, it, it was cold enough that after we did the uh, the post race interviews and everything standing around there, uh, we actually had some signs of uh, of maybe hypothermia going on. I mean, wow, Connor, wow, Connor was shaking. I mean, we we had to get him to the medical tent, get him wrapped up in a blanket. And I mean, when these guys bought percent body fat is you know south of uh, you know seven percent, <laughs> then uh, your ability to withstand the the cold once you're done running is is not great. And everyone was just totally uh, drenched in this. Cold cold driving rain and and uh but they, you know they recovered quickly once we realized that we had have won the thing finally yeah and uh and i'm just super proud for for all the men can and, we can we find a better place than Terre Haute, indiana for <laughs> well, one it is, it is tra it's tradition but it's tough in late november right yeah yeah well, and our women's program did so well, too. I think that was part of our success for the day because we were able to watch them run beforehand, see them battle, have the, their best race of the year, and come within six points of winning in second place. And we said, okay, man, we got next. Let's go do it. And, I mean, you can see, I mean, the rain is just coming down. What a great finish and look by at the, the women. the three yeah, coming yeah, together. Five, six, seven. That was Unbelievable. That was Unbelievable. And then Connor did a nice job pipping this guy from Virginia Tech right at the line for third place, too. You love that. That's big time, right? <laughs> Top three. That's awesome. Um, th now, my understanding is, and, and by the way, Terre Haute's got to be the spot. That's where they won the national title. Every, every yeah, year. Yeah, we now. don't mind. We don't, we don't spot, care. Right? Yeah, let's that's go back the there every happy year. place so now. My understanding is Matt Owens took fifth on the team, yes. scores. 45th overall. He had not run a 10K. First 10K he's ever run. <laughs> and he took 45th? No, we were saving it. We were saving it. That's <laughs> unbelievable. He's a steeple guy, which is 3,000 meters, and he's a little bigger. Yeah. He, he can run a good uh, mile for us as well. And so that's one reason why we kept him out. We kept Garnica uh, out last week at the regional meet, and they came back, and uh, and they were the difference, really. Your 4 or 5, you win yes. or lose championships with your 4 or 5, and they came through for us. So important, right? Yeah. Yeah. Now, once you got warmed up and and i'm gonna go back to you brandon what what was the celebration like with the women's team and everybody all around like walk us through the emotions and and what you did and and how you celebrated while you were out there um we were all pretty excited we went back to the tent and the first thing i think a lot of us did was sit in front of the heater that they had provided for us <laughs> and get ourselves warm and eat some food and then it was kind of just we did it and so we took some pictures and we enjoyed the moment and we're still enjoying it right now we're letting it soak in and um i think we're still celebrating it today. So, Connor, this is such a validating moment for the program, too, because you guys have been in the top three. You've had the 
the link letters and the awards and, and Ed, of, of course, winning individually. But what does this mean to you and the team to bring home the first national championship for men's cross country? This means everything, honestly, that the team is, you know, we've been so close and so good for so long that it's like every year it just kind of is like we want it, we want it, we want it. And then not being like, I mean, two years ago we were third and it was a very, it was a really hard to swallow third. Last year we went, we played the race very conservative because we didn't want to blow up and that led to a second place finish. And like we, we weren't very close at all to that, to winning it last year, but then, uh, this year it was just like, all right, like swing for the fences. We have, you know, it's going to be such a hard day. It's going to be a terrible day as far as like the weather was going to be. And we we're just like, all right, go out there, grind. And, uh, you know, it's going to suck, but it's going to suck less maybe for us if we win the thing. <laughs> <laughs> oh, it's nice to beat NAU as well. Oh, There's absolutely. A rivalry there, right? Absolutely. Yeah. Yes. Jacob, uh, explain the rivalry with Northern Arizona. And I saw some uh, trash talk Tuesday or whatever you guys were doing on social media, which is really fun. What's, what's the rivalry like with Northern Arizona? Um, I try to stay out of, uh, uh, stay out of the social media <laughs> as much as I can. Um, but the, when it comes to racing, it's just they have the target on their backs, and that's really what we've been uh, shooting for for the last three years. I think this year we did a better job at not thinking of it as a rivalry, just thinking of it as we're going to go out there and we're going to run our best race. But, yeah, the last three years it's just been uh, them and us going at it, and uh, it's, it's really rewarding to finally be on top of that rivalry and to uh, – yeah, to have the title. Yeah. yeah. Oh, well deserved. Congratulations. And in their def in NAU's defense, it's really not a rivalry until you beat them at the biggest championship there is. So now, I think before now, I don't know that it was a true rivalry. I mean, we were always the team, the little the little pesky team that was <laughs> nipping at their heels. But we finally beat. We took down Goliath this year, and so I think there's now a true rivalry. And we have the utmost respect for those guys. They train hard. We know what we do. I mean, our sport is hard enough mm. uh, to know. And, uh, I mean, when you're out running 100 to 120 miles a week, you have deep respect for everybody out there. So it's a, it's a nice rivalry. Coach, we'll finish with this. What's more gratifying, winning as a coach or winning as an individual? <laughs> no contest. Winning as a coach. I mean, to see the joy in these guys' faces. Uh, you know, running's a, a fairly hedonistic thing, and when you win it as an individual, it's great. Uh, but when you win it as a coach and you can see the joy in the faces of their parents and themselves, and, and really all the guys that I've had a privilege of coaching over the last 20 years. I had 150 texts on a Saturday night, most, of com most coming from guys who have been part of the program. And uh, basically my response was, these guys were standing on the uh, on the shoulders of you guys and all the work that you had done mm. in the past. So it was it's a great moment that way. They were all a part of it as well. Yeah, pretty so, cool. Yep, awesome. Well, congratulations, yes. guys. Yes. This Thanks, is big guys. time. This Absolutely. is big time. The first national title in 15 years at BYU for anybody. Oh, yeah, that's cool. And first under Tom Homeless, athletic director, yeah. by the way. So awesome. I think we're going to get a couple more though this year. Let's keep it going. As, Let's as go. Well, as well as soccer's going and everything and. And uh, we hope to bring another one of these back next year. Yeah, okay, awesome. Fantastic. Why and we've never one? had four guests on the set, by the way. You have to win a national championship <laughs> to get four. Big time. And we wanted to Big accommodate. Time. So thanks for coming in, all of you, and congratulations. Yeah, now, Connor and Ed That's have signed awesome. the flag, but we need uh, well, Jacob and Brandon to sign the flag. So <laughs> Absolutely. on your way out, ink the Sailor Coog flag with that national championship signature. Oh, I love it so much. Thanks, guys. Okay. Congratulations Appreciate again. Thanks for coming on. Okay, coming